am really excited to share with you one of the easiest yet most impactful room makeovers that I think I've done, at least on this channel. If you're subscribed, then you probably remember me designing the living room right after we moved in about five or six months ago. And honestly, I've loved it ever since, but just lately I've been wanting to redo a few areas and just try out some things I keep thinking about and also address some minor frustration slash problematic areas, I guess. I know in the new year, I get really into like new year, new me. And if you're anything like me, then you definitely wanna bring that into your home as well. And I know that we usually start with spring cleaning or decluttering, but I also think just refreshing a room is another really great way to wipe the slate clean, especially if you're on a budget. So let's go back into my living room and make some really small but intentional changes to have a really big impact. For those of you who have not seen the original empty house tour or the living room makeover. I will link those in the description below. Alrighty, so we're in my living room at the moment and the thing that's been kind of bugging me for a while is the lampshades in here. I feel like all of them, or not I feel, all of them are the same shape. And I guess I kind of just feel like I want some variation. On top of that, I'm being forced kind of to do that because I had this really cool vintage lampshade, but it is just totally deteriorating. And this on the top, has just like completely come off. So I wanna try a different type of lampshade and just have like a different vibe in here altogether. So for example, this shade used to actually be here because the shade that was on this one, I actually took off. I really do like this shade. It's just got some awesome veining. However, it's really like crumpled and stained and it really is noticeable with the light turned on. So instead of using that, I'm gonna find something else. But for now, I'm gonna put this one here. And I was thinking of putting this one on here this is just something else I've randomly picked up at the thrift store at some point for $2.95. This shade might be kind of interesting over here just because it brings like a different element. It doesn't look as antique and kind of has more of that modern vibe. So I think like having a balance over here would be kind of interesting. I don't know, what do you guys think? I really like it actually. So now it feels like there's some variety in the room. I do like the tree here too because it kind of separates these two. And now it feels even more separate because the lampshades are different. So I think the next thing is putting this potentially on here. Let's turn this on and see if it looks good. I really like this wood finial. I'm sorry, it's kind of like overcast, so it's hard to see, but I collect finials anytime I can find one at the thrift store or steal from another lamp in my house. I think you can just move these around to any room just to see what looks good. And I think this one looks perfect here. Okay, I really like this a lot. I think this is super interesting. I never would have thought to put this smaller shade on the bigger base, but because it's such a small profile, I think it really works. And now from here, you can see like all the lampshades look different. I think it just adds a little bit more visual interest, you know? So a few weeks back, I went to a bunch of different estate sales and I found this really cute table for $20 and I've been wanting to do something with it in the living room. I don't know if I wanna keep this here though. It kind of does look nice. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you like it here or I'm thinking of moving it like right here. I feel like it kind of completes this like entryway thing I have going on here, but it did look cute over here. I might keep it here for now just cause it's an easy place to put sunglasses and wallet and stuff like that. And then these are some bookshelves because we went to a garage sale maybe like an hour ago and this guy's going to deliver a bookshelf and I really want to put it on this wall here. Um, I think I want to move the record player into the guest room and I don't know what I want to do with that yet and I don't know if that'll look kind of cool over here but we'll try it out and I'll show you once it gets delivered. So before we go any further I just want to kind of give you an idea of where we're at at the moment. <laughs> We have the TV up here still from being sick and Christmas, and I have a solution for that here. And then this chair, I really like it because it's super Gothic and Spanish looking, and I thought it would match the house, but it does feel a little bit medieval in here, and I'm not really sure if I wanna keep it, I might sell it. The only other place that I could imagine putting it is somewhere over here. And I actually might want to move this back over there so that I can have the shoe rack there and then maybe the entry table here. So maybe we should try that. I also forgot to share with you the these really cool chairs that I found on Facebook Marketplace for like $40 for the pair. They're like these iron chairs and it's really been nice to just kind of like sit out here in the morning and have coffee and stuff like that. So I really like these chairs a lot. So 
So this just got delivered and I really like it. I think it's tall and it fills up this wall. And I've been looking for something to fill up the wall because we really don't want to mount this TV. And I think I could put some pictures on the side and then you can adjust the shelving like with these just little bracket things. So I'll just have to put this together and make it look kind of interesting, but I'm really excited to see what this looks like. And I feel like it really clears up the space back here. It feels a lot less cramped. The other day I just found this lamp on Facebook Marketplace for $10 and it needs a lot of work. I need to go to like get some Brasso or try something to take away all of this rust. But I really love this a lot and it's like adjustable here. So it could be something that I like put near the chair. It's kind of a strange place to have a chair considering the back of the couch is here, but I don't know. We'll have to play around with the furniture placement, but I'm really liking the bookshelf, so I need to get that set up. Okay, so the guy that we bought this from said he had it in his family for years, but I don't know what brand it is and it doesn't have anything written on it. I really like though that it's got these kind of curved edges at the top. And then I really like the shelves. They've kind of got this um, lip on each shelf. It just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. And then I could essentially flip these over and just have it flat, but I kind of think this adds a little bit more interest to it. The other crazy thing is, is that we just found this like I said, like an hour ago for only $5. I was shocked. I also picked up from him these really cute little bookends. These are kind of like a um, orangey, sandy tone. And I actually, I saw something similar in Palm Springs at that estate sale. And I think they were like 50 bucks and these are a lot bigger. So I think that these are so pretty and I can't believe I actually found a cool pair of bookends for a dollar after I was looking for so long and ended up DIYing my own. I just think these are great. These are the ones I DIYed out of some blocks that I found at a thrift store. And I kind of just put them up however I see fit on the day. I think they're just really fun. Alrighty, it's the next day and I wanna work on curtains in here. When we first moved in, we had to get the windows replaced. So I never worked on that in the original living room makeover I did. But before Christmas, we actually got some of these curtains from Ikea. They're the Lenda curtains and they're 98 inches long, which is absolutely perfect to just have like a little pool at the bottom. And I love these because it's been great for privacy at night or if it's really bright, it still lets in the light, but it also kind of blocks it too. It's opaque enough that it's not like a total blackout curtain. So I really like these. I also like the design of them. There's like a really nice pinstripe in them and I think that they're just really high quality and they're only like 30 bucks for two of them. So it's a really good deal. So I love these here but I want to put them on the other two windows just to make the room feel a little bit more cohesive. <laughs> So this is a pole that I got from Ikea and then the ends for it that you just screw on, I think were like maybe three bucks or something. Unfortunately, you also have to buy the brackets separately, but I think these are only $4 a piece as it is. Curtains is an absolute must. It totally makes a difference and makes it look really elevated and high end. I also feel like I have the best steamer. I've had this one for what feels like decades. I originally picked it up so long ago on Amazon when I used to do assisting in a wardrobe department in the film industry. And it's literally been with me ever since. It was really affordable. It's super reliable. The cord length is really long and I haven't had any issues with it. And I feel like it really gets the job done. So if you need something like that, I will definitely link it in the description below. The one reason I love these Ikea curtains is because I feel like they're really easy to pleat with a steamer. I think it's the way that they're set up on top. I didn't even use pleating hooks, but I'm able to squeeze together two or three bunches of curtain to create pleats. And I'm just taking the steamer up and down the crease, almost like I'm ironing it in mid air. And you don't have to do this excessively because it will end up holding and it'll eventually kind of loosen up over time. I just like to start off with getting out the major creases and then I pull all the pleats together and then I iron them from top to bottom and gravity does the rest of the work. I mentioned 
mentioned earlier, I have a solution for the TV, and I've also mentioned this many times before in other videos, that the TV is just a frustration for me, especially just in this house specifically. I always think the mantle is just about too high in any house, especially if you mount it on the wall, it's even higher, and I just think it hurts your neck and it's just not the best way to watch TV. So I found this tripod thing on Amazon, and I thought it would be an interesting solution because maybe we could just put it up in the living room whenever we wanted to use it, and then it would be easy to carry in and out of different rooms. So I think it's an interesting option depending on the layout of your space, and I will link it below in the description if this might work in your home because I think it provides another alternative for TV management. I just hate having a TV set up in a room anyways. It just feels like a big black box, and I'm not really a fan of the frame TV either. But either way, this was really easy to set up, and I do like the look of it. So I've got it up here and I'm not really sure that I like it. It kind of seems like an afterthought, but it might be nice to have like, if people are coming over or if it's Christmas and it doesn't have to live on the mantle and we don't have to mount it. The only other option that I did think of is that maybe it could be in front of the window. I don't know, it kind of still looks like it's a, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready for a marketing presentation to talk about Synergy. <laughs> Um, it's just not really working. I'm kind of bummed out because I really don't want to mount this on the wall because it's just too high above the fireplace. It just hurts our neck. And I don't have a media console unit that I really want to put up in here. So the TV is just going to be the bane of my existence, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty, it's following day and I'm in front of my fireplace and I've always wanted to do something with these shapes that kind of surround it. I think it's really interesting and it feels like it's very much like the 1929 home that it is. I think it just kind of gives it that art deco vibe. And I've always wanted to paint this because it looks like it's been painted over. It's a really bright white compared to this white here. And the outside of the house kind of has this like burgundy type trim, like somewhere around like this type of color. And I thought maybe bringing that in and then also having it just be like a pop of color in this room and making the fireplace a focal point. Considering I'm still keeping the TV on the mantle and I don't want that to be the focal point, I think this will make it really pop and your eye will go here instead of up there, which is exactly what I want. Um, so I got a few paint samples at Home Depot and a couple of them are from Bear. There's one called like Rumors and Cherry Cola. You can't even barely see a difference on camera probably. And I put all these on the tile that are basically the hearth of the fireplace just to see if something would match and kind of bring out that tile color. And the tile is kind of an orangey red brown. It's really got brown and orange undertones, but it feels red when you look at it in comparison to everything else. And I really responded to the cherry cola color, but then I also came across this color called Sweet Spice Berry by Glidden. And I think that this might be interesting as well, but I couldn't decide and they're very similar colors again. So I got two samples here and I'm gonna see what looks better. I think I might end up painting the entire thing with cherry cola just because it's a little bit more more of a refined like burgundy, whereas the spiced color is a little bit more red. So we'll see what looks better. I'm just gonna paint like two little swatches here and then I'll just paint over it once it dries with the color that I decide. I think this is really cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is quite red. It is so much lighter right now than it is the tiles and it's making the tiles look brown. And I don't know if I'm loving this, but the sample is so much darker as you can see here. And if it ends up being that color, it is really similar. So I think I just need to let this dry and do a couple more coats and hopefully I'll be happily inspired and loving it. But over here, while I was sitting on the ground, I realized I could change this out with this little plate that I got when I went to those estate sales. So I think I'm gonna do that because I don't mind this plate, but I think this one would look really nice.
changes add up and make a space feel really intentional. And I think the warm tones of the copper here just match the living room more so than the silver tones. And I think it makes this little entryway piece feel a little bit more complete. I feel like I've got this really intentional space here that feels like it really blends in and it doesn't stand out and it feels like it should be here. So I think little micro changes can really make an impact in any space. All right, it's been a few hours and this is the third coat of paint. And I don't know, I'm kind of liking it. It is matching the tile a lot more. I don't know whether to paint like the little baseboard here and go all the way around. I feel like it would look too traced, but I feel like it does distract from the TV and it kind of makes the fireplace feel like a moment. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you think. I'm kind of liking it, but I'm still kind of on the fence about it. So I spent all morning kind of bringing out decor and books that I want to use for this bookcase. I took out some of the extra shelves and this is just honestly impulsive. Like I didn't know where I want everything to be finally, but this is kind of what I've decided to live with, which I feel like it is balanced. And I think that's the game of decorating a bookshelf is balance. I also put my lime green pothos up above it. And I also added some of these tins. I got these back in the fall when I went thrifting for fall decor and they're like a little bit kitschy, but I kind of like them up there and they bring in that pop of red. So I might end up keeping those. I've also got a bunch of really long books that I wanna put somewhere, which I'm thinking here. I worked on this little vignette this morning. I felt like this is kind of what I wanted to start with. And I liked how this little vase kind of matches the painting and then the flowers from a certain angle kind of feel like they're coming out of the vase. And then these two books really match the painting as well. So I'm really into this and kind of wanna build around it. I think maybe getting a little light in here might be nice. I've also kept certain colors of books that I wanna have out here. These ones I feel like really match the room and I just don't want to have like super random colors in here to make it feel really busy. I think it's better if it feels a little bit more curated. I think honestly I need some color in here as well because it feels just very like wood and then colored objects. So either whether it's lighting or something else I want to just provide a different vibe in here but I'm really liking this so far. I kind of want something you know black here to balance out all the color. I also kind of just want some minimalism to balance out all the busyness. I put this lamp here because I think it could be actually a nice spotlight on the books. I love when bookcases are lit and I feel like I need to just probably end up spray painting this at the end of the day because I don't think Brasso or anything is going to fix that. But if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. So I picked up this a while ago for a couple bucks from a thrift store and I liked it because it's super sculptural and kind of feels like mid-century. I didn't really use it for anything. I think I tried to put like candles on it, but it just kind of felt like a bit much. However, I think the perfect spot for it might be in a bookshelf because it just kind of adds like a sculptural quality. I kind of like it actually, and I think I might want to put some small display things on it just to kind of make it feel like it's purposeful. I think it's a nice contrast between the setting that I've created below and the kitschiness of the tomatoes above. This is also something sculptural I could add. I actually DIY'd this in one of my past videos and I love it. I think it's super cute and feels like a little vintage piece of decor. And I've just been keeping like my coasters in it. So anyone who needs it for the coffee table can get one from here. So I actually found this at a Goodwill. I like it a lot. I love the frame initially, but then I was looking at this and this is actually made out of feathers and I guess it's called Mexican feather craft art. It's really pretty. And I think this was honestly only like $3. So 
I'm feeling like this is the best place for this sculptural pot and these big black and white books, but it's kind of dark because it's black and it's down low. So I want to bring some more lighting. So I actually got one of these lights off of Amazon and it's got these two magnetic clips that you just 3M stick onto the upside of the shelf here. And then this light actually magnetically attaches so that it could actually just sit underneath here like this and be a spotlight. It's also got some settings so you can turn it on or off. You can also do auto, which means that any kind of like movement will turn it on. And then I'm not sure what night is, but maybe like when it's dark out, it turns on. Let's just try on for now. I think that's a lot better. You can kind of see what's going on in there now and you can't even see it because it's so low. I do kind of want a light here, but then you'll see it and it might not look super great. <laughs> I really think this is so cool because I think it illuminates the sculpture and I'm kind of really obsessed with this. I can't wait to show you what it looks like at night. So I didn't know what to do with this little side table, but I'm just gonna make it an extension of the bookshelf here. I think putting these like nice blankets that we have on here as kind of like blanket storage instead of doing a blanket basket, is it kind of interesting? And I think this little picture here that I picked up at a thrift store for a couple bucks makes it kind of feel like a moment. Um, and then I can still have my lamp out here and it fills out this part of the wall a little bit more. <laughs> this really really pretty painting from the same estate sale that I got the copper plate from and the little side table and I think it would be really beautiful right here. I think this looks really nice here and I feel like it just matches the tone of the door and kind of feels like a window to what is actually outside. I really love this so much. Now that I've completed this list and before I show you the final reveal, let's take a look at what this place used to look like. <laughs> in love with how this space is looking. I finally feel like it's just so much closer to my taste and design, but it's also super true to the style of the home, which has always been pretty important to me. I like preserving that look. I think I definitely need to live with the fireplace color though for a moment, but for now it absolutely resolves the issue with the TV for the time being as it takes the attention away from the dreaded big black box. And it also emphasizes the art deco Spanish revival style of the home. I think there's just such a great vibe in here now, especially with all the lighting in the bookcase that I intentionally added, especially at nighttime. And I just love that it makes the room feel really like refined and kind of elevated and totally curated with really cool, unique, one of a kind pieces that I've had to collect from so many different estate sales, thrift stores, garage sales, flea markets over many years. After calculating the cost of all the decor, the furniture and improvements, this entire refresh only cost me under $200, which wasn't even spent up front as I have been collecting and thinking on this for a few months now. So this is a really good reminder that taking a slow approach to design is probably the best way to get the results you're ultimately looking for. I seriously can't wait to keep slowly collecting things just to see how this space and the rest of the home evolves as time goes on. If you think your home could use a simple refresh with a few secondhand items, but you're not sure where to start, then you'll definitely want to check out this series I created on what to buy while thrifting. Other than that, I will see you guys next week. Bye. Oh,